Welcome everyone. This is the 26th of April. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. Thanks for being here. So topics on my list, I had improved keyboard usability. Christina's not here yet, so let's move this one down. Then what's happened recently in UI improvements, what's coming in UI improvements were the two hot topics for me. Are there other topics you'd like to be sure are on the list for today? Okay, then let's get started. So um, Jan, I think the what's happened recently between your work and Basil Crow's work and Tim Jacome's work, Prototype JS is at least for me making really quite good progress on the removal process. There, okay, there's a lot of work to do as people can see from this list of, of issues that are open, but a number of them are green, right? A number of them have been closed out. Anything, anything that others want to note in terms of, I'm assuming this will be a, a multi-month effort, possibly all the way into Hacktoberfest and beyond. But are there any concerns or hot spots that people want to flag around the Prototype JS project? Jan, anything you wanted to say there? No, nothing. Um, it's looking really good there. Okay, well, so the next one then, Jan, this one is the one that you've You'd started on the removal of Yahoo UI. You want to tell us something about how that's going? I think I saw that the tooltip improvement has merged. Yeah, uh, that was the drop down improvements that that made it for to Dovol zero two, I believe. So that oh, should good. be in the latest weekly. Excellent. Okay, so and so if yeah, you checked so out the. Uh, Latest weekly on weekly.ci, you should see the uh, drop downs there now. Oh, oh, all right. So let's do a demo. I like demonstrations. Okay, so here's weekly. If I log in and the drop downs, for instance, here are now coming from not from Yahoo. Yeah. UI. The, yeah um, so they're powered by Tippy. So the same as the tooltips as well. Excellent. Oh, that's that's marvelous. Look at that. Notice everyone. Yes, modern. No, it's not Yahoo UI. Very nice. Any anything you need need to highlight there, or any important points that you'd like to to note? No, it's, it's been a multi month effort. So thanks to everyone involved. Really. Yeah. Congratulations. Any any other items you'd like to highlight as recent recent activity on? Sorry, Jan. Any other items you want to highlight? Oh, sorry. Um, no, nothing, nothing from me. Okay. All right. So I haven't done a recent survey of the the pending pull requests. Um, Jan, do you have a, a summary you want to share or ideas of things that are, are coming and are actively being worked? Yeah, I've, I've got a couple I wouldn't mind sharing. That's okay. Great. So are you okay if I stop sharing and we'll let you share? Sure. Yep. Okay. It's all yours. Cool. Um, so share my screen. Um, so the first one is related to the login and register flow. Um, Got a PR open for this, and there's also a post on the community forum. Um, just get some discussion. Uh, so if I hit login, it's kind of a lot more colorful and, and bolder than what we had before. Um, and it also carries across the branding that was kind of introduced with the design library slash about page. Um, also has a dark mode, which is quite nice. And if we go to register, Kind of follows that similar pattern. Um, so if anyone has any feedback, I'm, I'm all ears really. Um, yeah. And then the last one, I just change my branch to this one. If I go to a project, 
for none of that. So, yep. Hit configure. Uh, yep, hit this project is parameterized. Um, this branch replaces the previous header list button. Um, previously, it was like a, a UI button. And the drop down was also UI. That replaces it with the new drop downs that we have. So I tap that. Uh, so we've got kind of keyboard functionality as before. And we also have the search bar that we had before. So it's just kind of consistency, really. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that really. Um, I'll probably open a PR for this. Once I've kind of got rid of the other PRs, they're in progress. Um, yeah, looks like so. So then, cool. then not only not only you've added that search facility inside the dropdown, and keyboard navigation now is simplified. You said, um, search was there previously. Um, oh, okay, with the Yahoo menus, it's just been introduced into the new world of of menus. Really, um, just just demonstrating the features are, are carrying across, not losing any functionality uh, with the kind of change in framework. Um, so yeah, that's that really from me. Um, hopefully, have that up relatively soonish. Good. I'll stop sharing. If that's all. Excellent. Thank you. Any questions from others for Jan? All right. Thank you, Jan. So next topic that we had was on keyboard usability. And uh, let's, let me start sharing my screen again. So we've got a, a record here. Where, did, where is my Zoom control panel? There it is. Share. So Christina, did you want to, do you want, are there specific things you'd like to highlight in terms of what's coming there? We've got an, a JIRA ticket that Christina has just recently created here for compliance or for, for keyboard navigation. Christina, you want to talk further about where this is going? Uh, yeah, so you're still muted, Christy. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, uh, I threw that in today. I have to flesh out the description though and make it a little bit more verbose, but um, long story short, um, that's just going to be where I house um, the individual tickets for the, the bits and pieces. I'll create a ticket for just the navigation issues in the uh, main nav breadcrumbs and sidebar. Um, I've um, taken a stab at it. It looks like I can fix it easily enough myself. Um, I just need to carve out the time to just do it. It's been a little bit nuts with um, some other launches that we've had. Um, so I will, but I also kind of want this to, I'm not sure how y'all work, but if this acts as like kind of the home base for all of the accessibility work going forward. So if somebody else wants to pick something up later, we've got a kind of, documentation trail for for things. Um, Mark <clears throat> shared the, um, there was an accessibility report, the German one. I've uploaded the English, uh, I ran it through a translator and the English is a little funny. I don't think there's as many um, pregnant women having issues using it as maybe the translation <laughs> implied, <laughs> but it uh, is enough to, to, to get the point across. It was actually really good because their findings were very much in line with um, ours. So it didn't change um, the prioritization of the issues now that we have to look at. Um, but it did, they were able to access areas that I couldn't. So that was great. So this is kind of a nice comprehensive report. Um, but yeah, we're on the, we had, we'd identified the major things and had made our plan for that. So it was kind of nice validation there. Uh, yeah. So my Fridays now are going to be devoted to this so that I can actually just, I'm suffering a little bit from like one human and one body <laughs> syndrome, but like Fridays are going to be my like heads down accessibility time. So hopefully the uh, navigation stuff gets wrapped soon. 
seems fine though i've done and i've i've dug around in it and played with it a little bit and it, i i think i'll be able to to do what i need to do to fix it um there was a usability report as well um and i i didn't look at it in terms of what they found for the nav and sidebar and, and all that it's kind of outside the scope of the accessibility piece so maybe i'll just document Maybe once I'm done, I'll put some comments to kind of what has to happen in any future updates to make sure that those areas remain compliant, if there are any um, usability changes that come as a result of that report. Um, yeah, that's all I got. So when you when you say there was a usability, I'm used to thinking- There was two documents there. There was a- um, in that email this morning, there was like a usability report and then the accessibility report. So I don't know if the usability one was just kind of like um, from a non-accessible, just best practices perspective or not. Um, well, and and given the given but, that their sample was taken on two dot three hundred nineteen. We're we're a long ways from there, right? I mean, there there have been significant changes since then, so yeah. a so usability I'm, assessment may need may need a revisit anyway. Yeah. So I'm I'm just ignoring that, but I will document what I mean. I'll doc we documented in the code, but it I'll I'll put some notes there um, as far as like kind of what we need to make sure is there for any future updates to it, so so it exists somewhere. I, so that's my accessibility update. I did have something else um, to just a question for the group, just as an aside that came up this week. Is there any plans or has there been any exploration in the ability to collapse the right, the left sidebar in the, in Jenkins? So I think that's a Jan in your prototype, in your, the vision I prototype you did, it, it did collapse it, didn't it? You collapsed mm -hmm. the left-hand side panel? Um, in the prototype, it kind of removed the side panel altogether mm -hmm. on a lot of the screens. Um, Wasn't there like I've done a little bit of something. Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So I've done a little bit of like playing around with like hiding on mobile. Because mm -hmm. um, okay. right now, a lot of the content is pushed a mile down the page due to the sidebar, which isn't ideal. Um, but yeah. I've not taken it anywhere really. Okay. I was just wondering. We were there was discussion about hiding it, and I really I don't like to hide it. I know that's already done elsewhere, and there's kind of a hist a precedent for it. I thought if there was the ability to collapse it, that might be nice to get some screen real estate, but also like leave people who wanted that context kind of leap, give them the ability to access it easily. Um but that's cool. I just wanted to know if there was any thought happening towards that right now. So I'm not sure I understand the distinction between, so I think I understood Jan's remove the side panel entirely. It's live without a side panel at all. Yeah, my question was like, can we collapse it down to like, you know, icons or like, so that it's kind of like, it's still there. They can expand it if they want. Um, but maybe that's not desirable. I don't know. There was just something that came up this week that I want to know if like that's something actively being worked on and you know, but yeah, and as far as I understand, it's not being actively worked on, Jan. Does that match for you? That you, that's not a place you're not looking at finding a way to make this the side panel narrower or anything like that. Um, no, the no. Okay, great. Any other any other items for I, I guess I've got one. If if others are willing to tolerate me borrowing a topic that I should have put on the agenda, so notifying users of end of life. Are there other topics, or could I take steal a little bit of your time here to talk about a concept that I have? Okay, so. So one more topic then, this notifying users of end of life, we've got a number of things that happen in the context of a Jenkins controller, like, oh, I'm running on Ubuntu 18, but the Jenkins project stops supporting Ubuntu 18 
because Ubuntu stopped supporting Ubuntu 18 at May 31st of 2023. And my thought was, I would, I would love a way to tell people you're on something that is going to end of life on this date, or after that date, tell them it has ended life. You need to get off this thing. So my, my notion was extend the concept of an, of an admin monitor to allow us to store definitions of admin monitors inside Jenkins itself and say, if the file slash etc slash os dash release exists and contains the word Ubuntu 18, then show this message before this date, show this message after this date. The idea being that Jenkins would carry within itself some knowledge of its of what should be support, what, what it should warn you about based on the environment where it is running. Any comments from others? Does the idea sound plausible does it sound like it could be worthwhile or are there things you'd say no that won't work for the following reasons what difference exactly do you make with uh, implementing an administrative monitor well so for me the difference is administrative monitors typically don't have a, a date an effective date as a concept and so that's a that's a, a new concept the administrative monitor would have before this date, it should say this message. After this date, it should say this other message. Did that answer your question, Antoine, or was there something more? Okay, okay. So it would be like one administrative monitor, but several messages, uh, like with conditions to display those messages. That's what I was thinking, right? That was my mental model was, and the th further thought was, that maybe the monitor should become active again if if they dis, if they they dis, they cleared the monitor before the due date and it still passes the check and the due date occurs i want that monitor to reappear and say okay you have to clear it again because before we warned you it was expiring now we're warning you it has expired it's no longer supported so that was another concept for me that's that's a little different than the current admin monitors So Antoine, did did that did that make sense to you? What I've described? Yeah, that would actually be very interesting. Uh, yeah, that that whole concept. We, uh, I mean, on cloud B side on some proprietary stuff, we are re relying on those administrative monitors as well, and having possibility to define several messages with different steps, like one warning and one like final warning, and one uh, it's too late, but it's time to fix uh, stuff would be very interesting. Good. Okay. So, so I'll I'll continue that. I think I can just do it as a pull request to Jenkins. I don't even think I need a, a Jenkins enhancement proposal. This, the more I've worked through it, it feels like it's just pay, propose it and a data file that we use to define these things, and we can extend the data file, adding more more things to the list. This would solve for me the, how do we notify people that Alpine 3.14 isn't supported anymore? How do we notify them that Ubuntu 18 isn't? And in a future day, how do we tell them CentOS 7 is dead? Those, those are all things that matter to me deeply. <laughs> it won't solve things where they can't be represented as a file on the file system. So for instance, the end of the eventual end of life of Java 11, doesn't fit this. And so I've, I've got some more thinking to do about how would we do end of life of Java 11 when that day comes. All right, that's all that I had. Any other, anything else on, any other questions on that topic? Any other topics we should discuss here? All right, I'm going to take the quiet as the assumption we can go ahead and close the meeting. Thanks very much, everyone. Okay. <clears throat> Have a good month, everybody.